Hi, I'm John Ruggiero, and welcome to this episode of New Jersey Paranormal. With me today, as always, is Chris, my teammate, and our special guest, Dr. Lawrence Brock, who is a spiritual counselor. Thank you for being here, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you for having me. When we do this show, we try to touch on a lot of different subjects that are paranormal related. And again, doing the research, I came across your name and I went to your Facebook page. I watched a lot of your YouTube videos and they really kind of jumped out to me as something that I was really interested in and I'd like to speak to you about. Uh, let's start at the beginning. You had a near-death experience at, yes. the, at a young age. What were the circumstances surrounding your experience? Um, I was back east from living in Colorado at the time to visit my parents. And I went to a party and was drinking. And uh, I shouldn't have been driving, but I drove home. I didn't make it back to my parents and got in a bad accident. And I had, I guess, the normal experience people talk about where I was in going into the white light. I saw my body there leaning against the tree, a policeman kneeling over me. and. It was more of a feeling experience than knowing words to go with it, but it felt so loving and so caring. And just like every, I used a small term, everything was all right beyond what I could imagine. And it just seemed, it also hooked into a certain understanding and knowing about the human condition. Um, all of a sudden, I heard a voice with some being behind me say, you have to go back, your father wants you to stay. Mm. I knew the father he was talking about was the spiritual father, not my physical father. And from the point of view, well, everything's just okay. I went back in my body and woke up three days later in the hospital. Wow, that's something, because yeah. we've talked to people who have had similar experiences, yeah. and they all describe the same thing, that feeling of just no stress, no pain, just a good, feeling and it, it's strange to again speak to someone else who's had that experience well you also claim too that um, after this experience yes. that you all of a sudden have the ability to heal people and for me how did you find that out I mean was it just well it it's always been like a one step after the other so in the beginning it was just starting to notice when I touch people I'm a very kinesthetic feeling person even Socially, if I put my hand on someone's shoulder, I would notice it was getting warm. Um, I had one experience where, I don't remember some of the details, I remember the image of helping this person who injured their heel, their calf, and just massaging it because they were injured, and I felt my hands get warm, and they said, wow, that feels so much better. I had a lot of little things like that happen. I would say the biggest effect of my near-death experience, it sent me on this journey of wondering, of wanting to learn, and meeting a lot of people that had near-death experiences that were spiritual teachers and healing teachers. So it wasn't like all of a sudden I was where I am now. Right. It was a little bit. and. It was also during a time when people didn't even use the word near-death experience. It right. was almost embarrassing and sh felt shameful to even talk about it because people would think, I'm crazy. You know, so. Well, you had mentioned, again, in, in, in the article that I read in the video that I watched, that you actually have a checklist of things yes. that you do in order to, I guess, figure out how to heal someone or how to even start the process. What does that checklist even consist of? Well, a, a couple of the techniques that I studied use lists like that. So okay. It really was a way to get my intuition going. So I rarely use the lists anymore. It is almost like I just know what to do. But I have lists, there's something called radionics, uh, it's something they do in England, that there are a lot of lists. There can be lists of remedies, there can be lists like your skeletal system, your reproductive system, and you just check the things on the list mentally and then you just sort of feel, or I feel something sort of move when I get to the right word. Tuning into the body, so to speak. Tuning into the body, yes. So it's basically you're, you're hearing symptoms first and then you use your intuition or, or it's, just well, sort of develop? The, in using the list, you mentally, I say the list to myself. It's, okay. So I would use that when I'm not sure what to say. Okay. The truth is, I don't really need to know what's going on with the person or even tell them what's happening. Not anymore, but in the beginning, you sort of developed a, a method. Is that yeah, what you're saying? Yes, 
Um, there's part of it that the healing takes place outside of those lists. Okay. It's really using the words to start the healing going. Okay. It's almost like a key to open the door. Right and then it starts to happen. Okay. Part of why I do talk to people is they want to know what's going on. Right. And I, a lot of times I say, don't worry about that part. After I work with people, people feel better. And that part is what's really important. Usually for about three days, people feel like a burden has been lifted and it's just like they're so much lighter. Kind of really like cool. people that have Reiki for this, you know, and just yeah, feeling yeah, like I things, mean, it's like that yes. uh, feeling of. But the, the other thing is, is that, um, does it take more than one touch to, can you instantly heal someone? Is it a, over a time period? Does it matter? Is there like certain things that take longer than others? Yes. Sometimes it does happen within moments. It, sometimes it, even in, within seconds. Uh, sometimes it takes over a period of time. I need to work with people, you know, more times than just once. But yes, usually when people start to ask me questions, I just say yes right away. To whatever you're asking me, the answer is yes. You mentioned, can I heal anybody? I don't even like to think it's me healing. I know that what I do heals people, and I, would, I tend to think I could. It's just a matter of how much time it would take. So are, are, these, are these physical ailments or Again, mental yes, yes, ailments? Yes. It's, it's all the above. It's, um, I'm really good at talking about things psychologically, right. but there is a lot of physical ailments too. So if, if I complain of, I have a bad shoulder, not that I'm asking you to heal yes. that, but I do have a bad shoulder, that's something that you could? Yes. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Severe, severe it is. mental illnesses too? Yes, yeah. like I, yes to everything, and I don't, it does depend on something, but I don't know what that something is. Gotcha. So you're, you're, you know, we tend to, in Western medicine, look at the symptoms and right. we think, oh, this disease is harder than this, but that's not what it is. So it's a little more complex than just saying, yeah, I can, you know, and like the time frames and there's so much more involved. Yes. You know, it, Does it also depend on me, the person that you're trying to heal? I would like to think so, but sometimes people come to me, they don't believe in what I do. Their really? family member or friend forced them to come see me. and. Uh, so something happened a couple of years ago that really was a big step in me appreciating what I do in a way without feeling afraid that it was just my ego. Um, this woman af from a client re was referred to me who had a, an, a miscarriage and her reproductive system went downhill from there. The doctors basically said forget about having any children mm -hmm. and it was starting to affect the rest of her health. I knew as soon as I saw her, I was going to be able to help her. This was an in-person session, so I gave her, after two treatments, she sent me an email saying, I don't know what you do, and she didn't. And I don't really know what I do either, to tell you the truth. But she said, the doctor said I'm getting better. And I said, You'll, you know, and about a year later, I heard that she had a baby. That, that just makes me think that, is it more of the mind over matter placebo. type of thing? Yeah, the, the psychological makeup of us that if we feel negatively and we think negative, then the alternative and the outcome is negative, and if we're positive, then you have the more positive results? Um, it could be, and when people ask me that, I say, does it matter? You know, if you get better, you get, get better. better. Yeah. I don't think it's that because normally people feel a lot of energy in their body, you know, I mentioned to you, my hands getting warm. Now they don't get warm, they get very tingly. I think the warmth was more of it's when there's some resistance, it starts to mm. feel warm. Now that I'm more comfortable with it and know so the process So you've grown with better. this since it started, yes, basically. Yes, so definitely. The tingly, it, it's sort of like when your hand falls asleep type of tingly, when you just feel the, the nervous. It is almost of, like that, yes. It's a little different. Could you read that to sort of energy now, the universal energy now coursing through you and then reaching the person you're trying to heal? Yes. Even when I work over the phones, my hands start to become very tingly. Wow, that, that's really something. So what, what struck me what you just said, and that's a good follow-up question that I was going to ask you if we, we, we covered all the uh, topics here, the skeptic. Yes. Someone like me, believe me, I, I'm diehard right. skeptic. Okay. And the fact that you said even those people have seen whatever the effects yeah. of your, your healings are because I would think and I'm glad you didn't say it because most people would take the out of 
if you didn't believe, then you won't be healed. Right. As, as an excuse for not being able to help the skeptic. And you didn't say that. And that, that was, that's that was, not the thing. There are, I've had experiences, one comes to mind of someone during the session felt so much energy in their body, was so happy, and I, it, I contacted them the next couple of days, and they said nothing happened. And I'm thinking, like, what could have gone on in this person that went from having this amazing experience? So there are some people that it don't seem to get it, right. but I don't, it's not that they don't believe. I mean, I have all these stories. This man came to see me one time because his son was coming to see me and he was suspicious. He came into the room and sometimes color energy comes in and the light filled up with green light. Okay. And he saw it and I thought, well, that's cool. He's, but he was not a believer. So he spent at least 20 minutes trying to figure out why <laughs> the room looked green. And then it, he finally said, I don't know what you do, but I feel right. so good. And that was the end. He just came to check me do, out. Do so. you know if it worked or not? Could you feel that? Or is it the, the feedback that you get that lets well, you? Well, it's obviously both are important. I always see something happening. Okay. And how much the person gets it or feels it. It is definitely frustrating when I see a big shift and the person's not experiencing it. How I've, do you see it, though? Um, well, there's... My initial talent is more feeling, and okay. it was with my hands. But I've learned to develop spiritual seeing, even hearing, and th seeing things spiritually. Hmm. So, um, how does that even work? Do you get visions, do you, or is it just a it feeling? It is like it's visions. Like it is sometimes just like a feeling. Being it's, more attuned. It's it is being you're attuned. tuning yourself in on a much better frequency too so you're not relying on this so much anymore you're now opening yourself up to more yes because again I, I i watched your videos and, yeah. and and you started mentioning quantum physics yes and that hooked me because cool. i went from thinking okay maybe a quack to this guy is smart he yes. knows what he's talking about he's just not saying one day i woke up with this miraculous ability and he knows what he's talking about as far as the, the well, body and energy and everything else and that really made me watch and pay attention even more that that's true because when i before when i was younger i would think this is being a quack definitely so it well you talk again, about was, energy yes and I think what really intrigued us both that was really interesting yeah. is that you talk about a device. Yes. And then it said, like, explain it a little bit more to us and why you went to this type of thing to try. Well, I've been on a journey of learning about healing. I like electronic things. I like computers. I, you like toys. I like toys. <laughs> so someone, the first thing I used, I think it was, it's called the QX. Or, I don't remember what it's called, but it's a it's a biofeedback machine, but very involved, where it tests your frequency response, your electrical response to thousands of different items. Like the computer will send the frequency of vitamin C to your body and see how it responds. So there were like 10,000, and I thought this was really cool. Then someone, I used to belong to these online groups of practitioners, incredibly smart people. Someone mentioned this little device that was different, that worked with a, a denser electrical frequency, and you actually feel that electrical frequency. Yeah. So I started using that. Again, looking for information, and I do, I'm very skeptical about anyone who says they do what I do, and I want it to be hard, I want it there to be proof. I don't want it to be this, oh, it feels good kind of thing, you know, I want there to be proof. So, so. You, you mentioned again yes. that this device would sort of let you know where the body Central was point. concentrating the electronic the yes, electrical it, impulses and, and things of that nature because it helped It you. takes a, an electronic reading, right. so it'll send an electrical signal from a 9-volt battery right. into the body, and then it gives me different readings. And what you're, most of the protocols are you look for the highest readings, and then there's ways. The body tends to just focus on one thing and sort of gets lost forgetting about overall healing so this so, helps do so that. Uh, to kind of make it simplified is like when you're in pain and you ha w where you're in pain your skin tends to be a lot warmer because everything's yes. centralized there trying to heal you and, and make that inflammation go away correct right so kind with the, the warmth basis? it's also electrically focusing on there and along those same lines you said something again and i'll quote you because i did okay. write it down 
you said uh, it's how you tell where the consciousness is focused. Yes. Now, paranormal theory is everywhere and anywhere yes. when, when you get into doing what we do. And one of the things, because I read it a lot and I look at a lot or watch a lot of lectures, I believe that you know the consciousness, in my opinion, is, is up here. Because okay. this is what, in my opinion, makes us who we are. It's our hard drive. And when whatever happens to the body happens to us when we die, right. what happens to the consciousness? That was another thing that grabbed me when you use that, when, when you phrased it that way. Okay. It really was, again, my interpretation was you're saying now the consciousness, this is where everything is focusing now. That in your body is saying this is where the issue is so yeah, it, it yes. helps you find where the body is saying I'm in trouble this is the issue centralize what the body is concentrating on and the mind well I use the word consciousness to incorporate the mind the body right. your heart your spirit all those things and that when I use that it's it's giving you a signal of something there like you said the warmth something's focusing there does it matter exactly what it is again it, probably not if the person can get better. So what happens when the warmth gets focused somewhere, it sort of tends to get stuck there. So in those devices, there's something called an adaptive reaction cycle. So you want your body to be able to go into act, very active, which would be healing, normal activity, and resting. So resting, if you're stuck here, that means you're very sick. If you're stuck anywhere, it doesn't work. So you want it to keep going around the cycle. So the electronic devices do that. And it also taught me a lot about healing. Was there ever an extreme case that maybe you thought you couldn't help someone? And even to your surprise, that you may have done well, something beyond what you thought? You were when I'm working, nothing surprises me. OK, I could imagine with what you do. So, but it's, so with that woman having the baby, right. It was, so I started doing stuff online. And okay. I was looking, it was around Thanksgiving, I was looking, looking through emails of people sent me. And that was when I realized, wow, that's really amazing. I mean, I'd, when I'm doing it, it doesn't seem so right. amazing, to tell you the truth. Um, that's, but, so in one way, no. Because when I see people, I can sort of see how they can heal. Of course, when I'm not doing that, it, it's like being in a meditation of some sort, and you just sort of see, and you know stuff. Then when I'm not doing it, it then it looks like that's amazing. So, How uh, did you get to the point that you realized that you could do it more than just by touching? When did that finally, that light go off for you? What was that transition? That um, again, it was step by step. I started learning first. I learned polarity therapy, which is very gentle, hands-on. I started learning about crystals. I started using the electronic devices. Uh, actually, one experience happened where a friend of mine, uh, his father was very sick, and he was telling me. And I said to him, I'll pray for him. And in a, it's, it's funny, because I almost said it kind of sarcastically, but I did pray for him, and I felt something happen. And the next time I saw the guy, he said, my father got better then. And I go, I, know, I mean, I knew. Something in me just knew that. I don't, again, I don't know. You can't explain it. You just know. It's inexplainable in a lot of ways. Yes. That, that's, uh, uh, what about, uh, has there already been anyone that has come to you that, when, when we talked about yeah. the diehard skeptic, where they said, this doesn't work. You didn't do anything for me. Or that you couldn't, no matter how hard you try, even help them even a little bit. Well, the people who, who are like that, they don't come back. So. So it's, you don't know what the result right, is? Right, I don't know what the result <laughs> is. But I've had a woman I saw some years ago, she came to me for a bunch of sessions, but it seemed like nothing was happening. But she, um, she cried almost the whole time every session. And I happened to have the good fortune to run into her years later. Then I never heard from her, and I thought, oh, man, she, you know, I thought something kind of bad happened, maybe, and I saw her, and she looked so much healthier, and she came over and said, she hugged me, she said, that was like such a great experience. I don't normally get to see people years later when... Yeah, because you, you had know, mentioned, somebody, I think, yeah. when we, uh, or during one of the interviews I watched, someone from Australia yes. was someone, so we're talking a great you distance that you could yeah. affect people. How do, how do you even explain something like that? Or well, can you? I, 
spiritually, there's no time and space, so okay. it is like they're right there. Okay. I like Australia because a lot of times when I talk to someone there, it's a different day. Right. And it is like that's really cool, right? There's the part of stepping back and go, wow, that's amazing, like you're experiencing. But when I'm doing it, it's just like they're right there, and you can. I mean, I I just get to see things. It it there is some the coolness I like the cool part of it, and sometimes you know things very personal and you know that are not esoteric that could easily be. You're making a lot of connections, obviously. Yes. You're getting a lot of stories and seeing people and like, which has got to be amazing. Yeah. I have to address the elephant in okay. the room. Okay. How did people? react when you first came out with your family, people close to you? I was going to ask you about family too, what yeah. do they think of what you do? And well again, it happened slowly over a period of time, so and in the beginning it, it was more hands-on <laughs> stuff, but uh, again, a funny little story. So I was born in a Jewish family. Okay. After my near-death experience, my beliefs became very Christian. Okay. And I... Big uh, switch. Big switch, and I was very nervous about telling my dad about this. and. So I invited him out to dinner, and I wanted to tell him. And so I'm a minister in the church, okay. and his re I thought he was going to like freak out. Yeah. His response was, do you have to pay income tax? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's so good. It was Did you have any negative like, from someone that just looked, yeah, whatever, you know? Well, uh, there are times I could help my dad and help family members, yeah, and sometimes that. I offer, and they're usually not interested. Well, you have a daughter. You my daughter, she has no choice. So. <laughs> she has no choice. <laughs> but how, does she? I mean, does she? Well, she was brought up with this. Doing? Yes, she she knows. I mean, so she's this had is what she's always known. She's known nothing else. Right. It's different than someone who's just all of a sudden you woke up and you're this way and yeah. Okay, yeah. You weren't that before, but you're that now. I mean, I have a grown-up son also who's he's a little skeptical about it. When he was younger, I would help him some, but now, you know, I offer suggestions or things like that. He doesn't seem very interested. Because so maybe he, he's been exposed to the outer world, and they're just kind of looking at it. So he's like, you know, like we're, we're, yeah. the, we're the parents, we're the embarrassment, right? Exactly. I mean, we would like to believe, of course, that there are people that could do this. I mean, of course, yeah. this is something. And I mentioned that I wrote a book about something yeah. similar to this, and. Um, you know, again, the skeptic in me, I, we should have had someone come in and do a demonstration because yeah. that would have been great. But the skeptic in me, it, it, again, it's, I, I would have, again, totally said quack if yeah. I didn't really listen to you speak yeah. and explain the Things process. And anything is possible in this world. We don't understand. Again, as paranormal investigators, we don't, ex we don't understand the uh, you know, yeah, minuscule you amount of what the body is capable of and energy is capable of. And, and reading your story, it just spoke to me. And I That's wanted good. to meet you in person, and I, and, I, and I wanted to find out what the process was, especially when you mentioned that piece of equipment. I thought yeah. to myself, you really did approach this from such a logical, it wasn't just, hey, I have this ability, I think I could do this. You yeah. really studied this for years and years. You mentioned yes. going on that spiritual journey and yeah. meeting all of these different people so you know the different religious But that's another yes. question. New points. What were, some people might take it as a, okay, yeah, this is the whatever. You took it further. Why? What made you go further than? I do think, well, life keeps pushing me that way. Right. Like the near-death experience, sometimes I describe it as a kick in the butt. I'm, I'm just not allowed to not do it that way, to tell you the truth. It, life just... What were you like before that? Um, was I was definitely more science. <laughs> well, I was definitely a wild teenager, that's right. for sure, when I was younger. And um, I was, you know, would never think anything like this was so possible. So this completely altered your world. It completely altered the, the my world. The near-death experience is, yes. is... I didn't have an out-of-body experience, but I was in a bad car wreck myself. Yeah. And... When I realized that the, that the car was demolished and the blood was everywhere, and yeah. you, you sort of do have that life-affirming thing where you just go, where like I was looking at trees totally different. I was enjoying the breeze of the right. wind that I was still on the planet. And then to all of a sudden, like you said, when you, you, you touch people, it felt warm. What were you initially thinking when that was going on? Were you thinking, God, was I given a gift by something? I wasn't thinking that was until about two years ago, really, when I was reviewing those emails around Thanksgiving. And no, you I were freaked you know, out I by was, the first 
instance that I, in was... In one way I was kind of naive, in one way I was kind of egotistical, and it was, I don't know, you know, again, it was this, it wasn't all of a sudden... A um, slow healing. awakening, so to speak, right? It, it was slow and sometimes agonizing, that's for sure. Yeah, I could There's imagine, some. and any celebrities yeah. ever reach out to you, any people in... Uh, you, you I've had really some mention. people's not <laughs> super big celebrities, but yes. So. Okay, because I, I could imagine that again. This is something that, if if it worked, yeah, would be something well, that. The one thing I asked, uh, too, I'd want to ask going on that is that can anyone else learn to do this, or do you think this was just something that was gifted upon you? Well, it's a gift. I think it, people can learn it to a certain degree, and you're talking about celebrities. I've had the the fortunate experience of working with some really amazing athletes. Really? And can anyone play football? Not anyone. Can most people play football, but not like someone in the NFL? Right. Or tennis players or, you know, there's, yeah, I'm so I'm be better at out. it than yeah. most people are. And um, sometimes that's the biggest problem is people thinking they're doing it and they're not getting better. And then those are the clients that sometimes, it, like the people who know a little bit are the the hardest ones to work with. So you're talking about people who are skeptical or don't believe in it. In one way, they're easy to work with because they don't have ideas and thoughts that are trying to direct it a certain way. So, so real quick, because yes. we have a short time okay. left. I call you on the phone right yes. now, and I, do I tell you what my ailment is? How does the process begin? Do I say, I'm in need because I've got a bum knee yeah. that's been bothering me for five years. Can you help? Is that Usually how? people like to do that. Right. Um, uh, I'll get a general feel about something, and if people aren't talking, I say you have to talk about this because that's how the connection starts. Sometimes people will be talking about this, and I'll say, well, no, I need to change the subject because I see something else. Okay. So it can happen, people telling so me or people not. It's, yes. Right. So this energy comes in and starts to fill the person and connect them to this external energy, and I see where the blocks are to that. Wow. That's really what I'm doing. The physical healing is almost a side effect of more of a opening spiritually so like or I'm whatever you'd call it. Opening you up to the yes. healing it, effects. It, that is amazing to even think something like that Well, exists. you mentioned quantum physics. Part of quantum physics is scientists know we affect subatomic right. particles by looking at them. So it's not too much, you know, yeah, how far... Stretch. I read something that someone said, what if the subatomic particles are not moving when we're not watching them? And we can never know that. So yeah. if we're looking at them in a certain way, it can move things atomically. It's not that far of a leap no. to, well, healing can take place like that. Well, so. I thank you so much for being here, Doctor. Thank this you was for having me. definitely one of the more interesting Very conversations interesting. Oh, cool. Thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for watching this episode of New Jersey Paranormal. We'll see you next time.